Hey y'all, it's Taker's Keep, and welcome back to my channel. Today we have yet another bootleg anime figure review. Brought to you by AliExpress. Uh, not sponsored, but they did provide me with some pretty interesting bootlegs today. Now, I still don't fully support the bootleg market, however, it's something that y'all are really interested in, and my curiosity just got the better of me this time around. At least one of these figures is going to be available as a officially licensed figure, but for the most part, these are just bootlegs from Garage Kits. Uh, so without further ado, let's get right into the unboxing. Now we're going to start with the soft packaging first, just because this one, I hate soft packaging, uh, gotta make sure that these things are in one piece. Nikkei Goddess of Victory Anime Girls Cute Girl Figure Nikkei Sexual Girl Action Figure. Yep, this will be, um, this will be the first one that we open up. Yeah, the, the naming conventions for these figures are something else. Um, yeah, the one funny thing about anime bootlegs is they try to describe the figure in as much detail as possible without actually seeing what the, what the character is. They really bubble wrap this one tight. I that is a lot of freaking bubble wrap. All right, so let's get her opened up. I wonder if the head comes off. No. Uh. Okay. I guess we're just gonna slide it right on then. I have no clue how to put this on. Okay, maybe I just bend the hair back. Yeah, this is actually quite difficult. Okay, I think, I think I got her. Trying not to destroy this bootleg here. Now, ever since doing my last bootleg review, I've actually gotten a lot of feedback from y'all, and especially when it comes to tiering bootlegs. Now, I didn't know that there's a term called cursed god, which is what we usually associate with bootlegs that are just absolute rubbish, just does not look like the figure, does not look like the character at all with really trashy um, quality control. But apparently mod most modern bootlegs do not fall into that category and are usually decent at worst. This garage kit was created by Cerberus Project and was picked up by Flair. So there is an official merchandise of this figure coming out soon, which will be leagues above this bootleg, not in, even in the same ballpark. I would say it's probably the worst bootleg I have reviewed on this channel so far. Um, it definitely shows a lot of sloppiness. So first of all, I don't think they got the coverage right. Like I almost did think they tried to do some shading, but I don't think that's the case. The white paint didn't cover all of the hair on this figure. So it still has some gray spots in it. It's a little cakey, a lot of seams. Um, very little grinding. Like they didn't, they didn't sand down any of the areas really. The headphones are incredibly loose. I, I believe they wanted to like the original Garage Kit probably had them like removable. You can take off her headphones, but putting them on, it's just they're very loose. You, they just don't latch onto her head very well so they're just just kind of moving around in in that section that they made for her headphones if you look at alice's sneakers you can almost see what looks like skid marks 
like doo doo marks. I, it's, <laughs> it isn't very flattering to say the least. Uh, yeah, this this looks a lot more like a stereotypical bootleg to me than any of the other bootlegs I've done so far. So for a twenty dollar bootleg, I have to say there is a lot to be desired. However, it's a $20 figure that's a bootleg of something that'd be around $100 to $200. So it's honestly not the end of the world, especially if you're trying to build your Nikkei collection on a budget, but definitely you're getting what you paid for with this figure. All right. Bootleg number two. Okay, we have that. Surprisingly, this one's starting to look a lot better than Alice. Akko's sculpting overall is really impressive. It really does remind me of the other Blue Archive bootleg I reviewed, Kayoko. It looks really, really close to her in-game portraits. The colors are also very good as well. Her face is passable. I do like it. I do think the little heart pupils are really cute. They did a, I would say they did a good job of her um, with a hair transition from light blue to a darker blue at the ends, but they definitely did a terrible job on her halo. The halo is, it's almost hard to make out what her halo is supposed to be, which is a half moon with a circle in the middle, but like, it's hard to make it all out. It looks like a clear piece of light blue plastic. Overall, she looks pretty rough in places, but for what you're getting, at a $10 price point is honestly really impressive. I would say it competes in quality with your standard prize figure, honestly. It's, it really is that good. The bootleggers really hit the mark with this one compared to Alice from Nikkei. And with that, let's move on to our last figure. Now, now this one is the most expensive figure on the, on the, on the list so far. I don't know why I continue to buy these boxes. They're, there's pretty much no use for these other than, I guess, if you need to move them at some point. So, pretty traditional looking base right here. It's a metal peg instead of a standard plastic one. I feel nervous about this skateboard though. Now this is the figure that I've been waiting for. Hu Tao from Genshin Impact. And this particular Hu Tao is a character design that was created by Mobius. I believe that was what their, the group was called. And they're a garage kit manufacturer. And this is actually one of the rare garage kits. I think I've heard that the garage kits have sold for as much as 30 K yen or around 250, $300. So it is a very, very expensive and rare garage kit. I will say the figure is pretty impressive. Like compared to the promotion photos, She's obviously has a little less polish, but for the most part, sculpting wise, it looks very convincingly like the figure that Mobius created. However, when you take a closer look of her, she definitely does start to show cracks. The very poor sanding of her hair sculpt, um, the very chunky paint that they applied to her hair, Obviously not as bad as Alice's hair, mind you. They did actually finish painting her hair, but there is there is definitely a roughness that you notice when you look closer at the details. Her face looks really good. 
very similar to silver wool <laughs> very similar to silver wool that i um reviewed from my previous bootleg video she's blowing some bubble gum however the paint job i i kind of don't notice one um <laughs> it's very rough very dry like it almost looks like she's blowing chalk um, you can even see it, some imperfections in the bubble. Compared to Silverwolf's bubble blowing, her bubble is very much more convincing. It's a pinkish color, it's got a shine to it, none of that's present on here. So it almost, to me it almost looks like she's like blowing a ghost bubble, um, similar to her cute little ghost she has at her side. Speaking of which, I really don't have any complaints. So it is pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to the garage kit, albeit, you know, of course, a few more imperfections here and there. But hey, I, I have no complaints. Really cute with a matching hat. When we get down to her clothing, of course, we got the Hoyo special of showing that midriff, the really toned tummy. Those are details that are not from Genshin Impact, but I, I appreciate the fan service here. I'm not quite sure what technique they use for the skateboard, but it almost looks like they used some sticker, like a sticker on the front to do the detail work. I don't know, in certain lighting, it looks really like a warbling effect to the to the surface. Like it, like when you reflect something off of the surface, it just looks really off. Like the texture looks really off, but in regular lighting, it's kind of not noticeable. I don't know, it's <laughs> it's definitely, uh, there's definitely some quality control issues with it, but not enough for me to really kind of write off the entire thing. I mean, it's to be expected. When you have a mass-produced bootleg like this, they aren't really gonna go in with quality controlling the figure to that level, like a garage kitter would. Um, but it's still, I, I, I'm still very impressed with it overall. I mean, she sells for around $40 US. Um, and that is an, I would actually say that's an absolute steal. Overall, this Hu Tao figure is really good for the price point. Um, though there are still some prize figures on the market that would probably beat this level of quality. So $40 might be kind of expensive to spend on this bootleg. However, chances are for a standard collector, this is kind of their only option until Mobius' design is picked up by a accredited manufacturer like Flair or Max Factory. So uh, it's it's definitely an unfortunate situation because this is a very good design. I'm not really a Genshin Impact fan like that, but I'm really a fan of this character design. And with that, thank you very much for tuning into my video today. If you liked what you saw, please comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. See ya!